So we're going to recap what we can do with negative numbers. That's very useful to use a number line, particularly when adding and subtracting. Let's look at a couple of questions. OK, so I've got two questions. Now here I can use my number line and I'm just going to do that. So if we just remember back to overdrafts and such like, this first question means I'd start with an overdraft of two and then I'm adding three pounds into my account. And let's just do that on the number line. So I'm starting with an overdraft of two, I'm starting at negative two and I'm adding three. And just want to remember, adding is always going this way. One, two, three. And because I added more than my overdraft, I've now got positive money. I've now got one pound. OK, let's do the same with the next one. So I start with four. And this time I'm taking away, so I'm going this way and I'm taking away six. OK, so this is where I'm going to end up. Negative two. So with those, you can literally just use a number line or if you're feeling confident, you can do it without a number line. OK, let's look at a couple more examples. OK, sometimes we'll have an example where there's what's called adjacent signs. Adjacent signs, if you remember, is when two signs are next to each other. They're touching each other here. They're not touching each other. There's a number in between. Here they're adjacent. And here, even though there's a bracket, they're still adjacent. There's no number in between. And here they're adjacent. So we're looking at adjacent signs. And when there's an adjacent sign, we just do a little line underneath so we can see them. And this makes a face. In this case, it is a winky face. And winky faces, when someone random on the bus winks at us, it makes us feel negative. So I make this into a big negative sign. So I've now got four take away two, which is just two. OK, let's try the next one. So adjacent signs, I'll do the line underneath. This person looks like both their eyes are closed, like a little baby sleeping. Very cute. Isn't it cute? Makes us feel positive. So what we have now is three plus four, and that's seven. And now let's look at this one. What does it look like? A winky face. So how do we feel? Negative. So I've got negative two, take away three. Now for this one, because we've got a few more negatives, you might want to use the number line. So I've got negative two. Remember when I add, I always go that way. And when I take away, I always go that way. I'm taking away, so I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to end up there. And that is negative five. So that is adding and subtracting negative numbers. And now we're going to remember about multiplication and division. Notice that sometimes there's brackets, sometimes there's not. Don't get distracted by them. Just sometimes negative numbers like to have their little jackets, their little blazers on, and sometimes they're naked. That's fine. There's a rule when we multiply and divide with negatives. Let's see if you can remember it. Can you finish the sentence? When multiplying and dividing, negative signs always come in pairs. So if you remember, this is when they're handshaking. So let's have a look here. The first question, question six. I've got three here and I've got negative four. So there's an arm there ready to shake, no one to shake hands with. So I better give him someone to shake hands with in the answer. And then I will do three times four, which is 12. OK, let's try the next one. I have got a negative sign here and a negative sign here. That's a pair. They can pair up and shake hands. So I can't have one in the answer because they're already shaking hands. There's no space for anyone else. So the answer is positive. And I just do two times five, 10. OK. This next one, I've got a negative here, just on its own, no other negatives, and it needs someone to shake hands with, so I'd better give it a hand to shake. There's a hand for it to shake, and now 10 times 6, 60. OK, remember this works not only with multiplication, but with division as well. So let's have a look over here. I have got negative 50, no one for it to shake hands with, so my answer is going to be negative. And I can use my multiplication square, or I can count in fives till I get to 50. Well, it takes me 10 fives to get to 50. And last of all, here, I've got a negative 12 and a negative 2. So they can shake hands. I can't have one in the answer, otherwise I'll have no one to shake hands with. 
12 divided by 2. How many 2s go into 12? 6. Okay, so make sure that you remember this rule. And in fact, if you need, make another note of it before you have a go at the questions. So if you need to, if you'd forgotten that rule, please can you write down that rule again in your book.